Oh, let's jump into part four in our series, Caroling Again. We've been going through some scriptures behind some of our favorite Christmas carols. And we just sang one that we're going to talk about today, and that's I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. That's not normally the first uh, you know, uh, carol that's requested around the old Christmas tree, but it is rich in its lyrics, and they were born out of painful circumstances. And these circumstances drive home the message of hope and the power of God's marvelous plan. The author of this song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, was Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He was born in 1804. Here he is up here. He was one of America's greatest poets. You may know him as the author of Paul Revere's Ride, but he also wrote many other poems and novels and even updated and translated uh, historical novels so that everybody could read them. But this man was a man familiar with tragedy. His first wife died suddenly while he was overseas, and he was devastated. After a while, he married again in 1843, and that couple had six children. But then in 1861, something terrible happened. While sealing envelopes with hot wax, a flame caught his wife's clothes on fire. And Henry awoke and rushed to her aid and tried to smother the flames. But by the time the fire was out, she had been burned beyond any recovery. His own burns were so bad that uh, he fell into a deep depression and he threw himself into his work. Longfellow was a staunch abolitionist and he was completely against slavery. And that was something that he proudly reflected in his writings. While dining at home on December 1st, 1863, Longfellow received a telegraph that, uh, that his oldest son had been severely wounded four days earlier while fighting against the Confederacy in the Civil War. Here's Charlie. is a picture of him. He was shot through the left shoulder with the bullet exiting uh, his right shoulder. And he survived, but he would have a long recovery ahead of him. Bethany Pyle says this, that Longfellow found himself staring down another Christmas season as a twice widower with five children dependent on him and one that was on the brink of death. And outside he heard the Christmas bells ringing. But I imagine he could also hear the cannons and the gunfire of war in his mind. The world was tearing itself apart. And there didn't seem to be much space for peace on earth or goodwill towards men. Does that sound familiar to you today? Today, around us, the world is very divisive. Vulnerable and hurting people are falling through the cracks. And no one looks like they have answers. Everyone is out for themselves. Maybe you've even had personal tragedy in your life. And it feels like this Christmas season, the lights of Christmas uh, glow dimly and they twinkle in a dull way and the songs are disjointed and they don't have that same feeling that they used to have. And the echoes of uh, your past from Christmases long ago mock your sadness and your worry and your despair you feel today. And you find yourself saying, it just doesn't feel like. Christmas. Longfellow felt this way as he penned this song. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill towards men. But then from each black accursed mouth, the cannon thundered in the south. And with the sound, the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent and made forlorn the houses born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. 
and in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks this song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. This is going to sound silly, but the, I first became familiar with this song as a 19-year-old young man working at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but this rat has a version of this tragic song. I was there cleaning ball pits and emptying trash cans and you know, finding in, you know, distinguishable wet spots all over the place. <laughs> and as I'm doing this, this pizza rat is singing this song. And he's talking about these big <clears throat> topics and I'm feeling it. And I'm becoming overwhelmed with emotion as I'm in Chuck E. Cheese. These uh, thoughts that there is no peace and that hate is strong and it mocks any thought of hope. And as he wrote this song, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow felt these words as well, deep inside of him. His head hung low as he went outside and he heard the Christmas bells ringing in Cambridge and then the singing of peace on earth, but he observed a world of injustice and a world of violence that seemed to mock the truthfulness of this optimistic outlook. It's hard sometimes to look around at the world that we see and think about peace on earth, goodwill to men. It's so easy to become cold and cynical and negative because that is what the world is. And it's easy for us to reflect that back at the world. Why? Because you have been hurt and you have been broken. There's abuse and violence and people without clean water and wars and disease. And, and we're blowing up inflatable snowmen and drinking eggnog. How many of y'all like eggnog? We got four. It's great. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with that 17 gallons of eggnog down there. <laughs> but it's hard sometimes to look around at the world around us and think about peace on earth, goodwill towards men. It's easy to become cold and distant. Maybe you even have a personal loss in your life, and this year you're just not feeling Christmas. It's different, it's broken. The Christmases that you have in the past don't match up to what you have right now, and they are not what you have dreamt for in this future. But writings like this remind us that it's okay, and even Christian, to be real and raw. And to be honest and to boldly take our hurt and tragedy to God. You don't have to walk around with a smile pasted on your face singing Hosanna and Hallelujah all the time and then inside be torn up. He's not tired of your tragedy. You can take it to God. He's not tired of your pain. Go to him again and again and again with your broken heart. This realism and authenticity is what makes Christmas so special. Because this is the world that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, came into. This is why the, world, the words Emmanuel mean so much. God with us. But not just in a magical palace of marshmallows and gumdrops. No, in the muck and in the mess, God is with us. In the tragedy and the pain. And he's with you even when... The world is strong with hate and peace is mocked. This broken world needed a savior and Christ was born. The prophet Isaiah told us hundreds of years before Jesus came this. In Isaiah 9, 6, Isaiah would prophesy, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this 
time, forth, and forevermore. 2,000 years ago, God came to save us. Jesus, the Christ child. Why did he need to save us? Because this world is broken and shattered and torn and fragmented. But this Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, is coming again to make all things new. And you're not alone. And this Christmas, you may feel like you should have somebody sitting next to you as you go on a sleigh ride and you eat Christmas cookies together and you might not have what you thought you'd have. But you're not alone. And that brokenness inside of us can be healed and can be fixed. There can be peace inside of us. And he will fix all brokenness one day. The wicked leaders of this world that point towards themselves but have no real answers will not be in charge in that day. Jesus is coming to heal the world. And the darkness and of depression and despair, they may wave over us. And Henry Wadsworth Longfellow felt that and he remembered that, that even though he felt this deep pain that one day Jesus is coming to heal the world once and for all. We could picture him out in the snow with his head hung low, broken because of real tragedy, real loss, real fear. And this song is deeply personal for him. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks this song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. But then the bells pealed loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The right shall prevail, the wrong shall fail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. God is not blind, God is not deaf, God is not... Uh, Speechless, he's not dead, no matter what, he will fix everything, whether in this life or in the next, he will prevail. Matthew chapter 1 gives us the genealogy of Jesus' adopted father, Joseph. You may remember that chapter for when you tried to read through the Bible in January and got to the genealogies and quit, all right? But there's... Four very specific things that stand out about this genealogy that tells us why Jesus had a claim to the throne. Because it comes from Abraham to King David to Solomon. And it shows us why he is the king of kings. But these four things stand out in this passage. And that's the name of four women. Ruth, Tamar, Rahab, and Bathsheba. Each of them with their own unique story and pain. Widowed or abused, uh, trapped in sin or taken advantage of. Each of these women being used in the most amazing way possible. To be part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. And to have that pain redeemed by the Redeemer. And despite their pain and struggle, God used them and used their story. And God's not done with you yet either. Even though you may not see it in the right now, God's not dead nor doth he sleep. This life is temporary. But life with Christ is eternal. A couple of months ago, I was writing this sermon, and it's kind of weird writing a uh, you know, Christmas stuff before Thanksgiving and like halfway in the summer almost. But I came home and I had showed Noah this song. I heard the bells on Christmas Day and he just was taken with it. He'd been listening to it ever since. And what was important to him about it is he was going through a time at school that he was frustrated with and he was a little depressed. And this song reminded him that it was okay to feel your emotions. And it's okay to admit that you're not okay. And it's okay to admit that life is hard. But peace is possible because God is not dead. 
And the hardship is just for right now. It's not for forever. God is good and God is in control. So rejoice this Christmas. Jesus is here. He's not far away. He did not leave you alone. The baby grew up and he proved who he was. And that grown man sacrificed himself on a cross to heal what is broken inside of you and to mend your relationship with God. But that grown man didn't stay dead. He rose from the grave and he's coming back to finish the job of healing and mending the world so that there will be peace on earth forever. And this is why we say, Merry Christmas. With every head bowed and eyes closed. As the band comes. It's important for us to recognize and realize that distracting ourselves with festivities and merriment will not heal things that are broken inside of us. You may get to December 26th and all of it will come waving over you again, perhaps even deeper and harder than before. Why not, instead of distracting yourself, why not pour yourself in to the Prince of Peace? Give yourself over in this moment, in this right now, and tell him, God, I'm hurting, I'm struggling, there's real pain that I have buried deep inside of me, a relationship with somebody in your life that your heart is broken for, fear about your future, pain and abuse and people that have wronged you in your past. You've got two choices. Heading into this Christmas season, you can carry it with you, and you can feel that weight inside you, and distract yourself, but really in the deepness of who you are, you know that there is brokenness that hasn't been healed. You can carry it, or right now, in this moment, you can give it to Jesus. You hand it over to him and say, God, I can't do anything with this yet. God, there's, I have to wait, or, or, or I can't fix this, and I can't bear this anymore because I can't do anything about it. But I trust that you are in control, and you can bring peace where there is no peace. You can give it over to him right now. There's someone in here today that's got a brokenness with their child or their parent, someone that's missing somebody around the Christmas table this year, or somebody who's got a new diagnosis or their checking account just isn't going to match what they need, you're not alone. Emmanuel, God with us in the brokenness and in the trauma and in the struggle. Surrender. Give it over. Let go. Stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to make it better. Stop trying to plan it all out or stop trying to get that person back or stop trying to make it better. And instead, give it to the maker of the world. Give it to the one who fixes things. Yeah, it may not be today. It may not be next year. Some things will be fixed in this life and others in the next. But you can't struggle the rest of your life and be who God made you to be. You can't thrash and kick against your problems. There is no peace in that. Give it to him. And maybe that means you give it to him in the right now and then you give it to him 
45 minutes from now when it crashes over you again and then you give it to him tonight and then tomorrow and then the next day and you're constantly handing your problems back to God because you realize you can't handle it. You need him to bear your burdens. Life is hard. But you don't have to do it alone. Maybe you're here today and you're not yet sure that you are a follower of Jesus. See, the Bible tells us that we have a problem. That problem is called sin, and it separates us from God. Every thought that we've had that's wicked, every word that is harsh, every lie, all our pride, all these things drive a wedge between us and God. Because God is a perfect and a holy God. See, way back at the beginning when sin rushed into this world, it caused this brokenness and this death and this disease that we see all around us, the violence and the wars. Sin is to blame. But Jesus didn't leave us in our sin. Jesus is God in the flesh. God himself got off the throne 2,000 years ago, and he was born as a baby, and he lived a perfect and a holy life for 33 years so that he could lay down his life on a cross so that God, innocent as he was, could die in our place. And all those wages of sin that we had earned and the punishment that we deserved for all our wrongs, Jesus paid it all. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not something you work for. You don't have to give so much money or join in the church necessarily or do some good deeds. No, Jesus did everything that needed to be done. The Bible says, all you have to do is call on him and ask him to save you. You can do it right now. The words aren't important. It's not a poem or something like that. It is simply a cry from your heart to God's ears. Understanding that you are broken and you need a savior. That you're sorry for your sins. And you're turning away from them. And you're putting your faith in Christ alone and what he did on the cross. I'm going to challenge you, if that's that calling inside of you that you're feeling right now, don't leave until you get that settled. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a calling out from God in your heart. I need you. Jesus, I need this gift of salvation. Forgive me for my sin. Why don't you call out to him today? And if you do that, I pray that you'd write that down on your connection card because I'd love to follow up with you. Say, I chose Jesus. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. God, I pray as we continue through this Christmas season, God, those that are hurting and broken and, and, and they're just not feeling it this Christmas, God, I pray that you would help them to give it over to you and re to remember right now in this moment that God is not dead, nor does he sleep, that he is good and that he's in control. God, we love you. In your name we pray.